From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good Wednesday morning. It's 5.30. Welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Victoria Hill. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. And good morning to Miller. Morning. Here with uh, the weather forecast and what's going to happen today. Well, it's going to get warmer. Yay, that's I gonna, guess. That's going to be cool. Know. Right? Just, we, we know that we won't have much <laughs> warmth left, so yeah, that's why I mean, I'm a little excited about we it. We could possibly still flirt with the 90s here in Billings as we okay, get into Saturday. Cool. I know, but <laughs> that, it won't last. That's where I'm like, eh. It won't last. Hang in there with me because we have another cold front. we got a cold front today, cold front on Saturday, it's, and that one really is going to cool us down. Looking really good in terms of our temperatures the first part of next week, and it's going to give us some much-needed rain. Live shot here, you can see the mothership in the background, courtesy of the Stockman Bank weather cam. It's a really nice start. 54 right now here in Yellowstone County at the airport. Humidity is at 47%. Winds out of the southwest at about 13 miles an hour. Remember, those winds are going to be kicking up today, and with low humidity, we'll have a red flag warning in effect for pretty much a good portion of our viewing area today. So watch out causing any sparks today. Quickly, some temperatures across the board. White Sulphur Springs at 49, Livingston at 57, Big Timber 58, Harlington at 54. We've got Roundup at 53, Huntley 54, Hardin at 50, uh, 44, rather, and down in Cali. We're at 50. You're going to see a lot of 80s, low to mid 80s, maybe some upper 80s today uh, as we warm up. It's called prefrontal heating, but that cold front comes in tomorrow and cools us down nicely. High today of 84 here in the Magic City with lots of sunshine to start. We'll see some clouds build up a little bit later on this afternoon, but all in all, should be a very nice day today. All right. Sounds pleasant to me, Miller. Thank you so much. I'll get on to news. <laughs> We begin with crime news on this Wednesday. Billings police are investigating two separate car fires in two different parts of town, trying to figure out if they're related. One of the vehicles belonged to high school senior Jackson Martin. He was parked on 6th Street West and Avenue B and was walking into senior high. Jackson realized he forgot his phone, turned around and went to get it. That's when he saw his car smoking and was able to get his phone out and record just before his vehicle went up in flames. When my car smoking, I had all four of my windows rolled down, so I assumed somebody flicked something in the back seat of my car. It's, you know, I put a lot of my own money into that car, and then watching it burn was a, it was a devastating moment for sure. Both car fires happened on Monday. Police say they're under investigation. Together, the fires caused more than $7,000 in damage. The names of three people in their 20s who died in an ATV crash have been released. 24-year-old Tyler Craig, 22-year-old Dallas Milstadt, and Kaylee Weiland all died from blood force trauma on Sunday. Craig and Weiland are from Billings, while Milstadt is from Shepherd. The four-seat off-road vehicle was found in a shallow ravine near the 4,000 block of Highway 87. East. Law enforcement believes the ATV went into the ravine and impacted the other side, killing the three people in the vehicle. In education news, the nationwide worker shortage is now affecting school children in Montana. Elementary students in Bozeman will no longer be offered a hot lunch. The Bozeman district has more than 100 open positions, including 15 in the food service area. District officials blame shortfalls in staff, but also a lack of food. They say they aren't getting orders from large suppliers, and they're feeding 3,000 or more students per day. We are uh, in, a, in a tough spot as far as food service goes. This week we cut back and just are doing sack lunches. They're, they're compliant, they meet all the nutritional requirements, they're free as were hot lunches. But we've cut back at four of the elementary buildings um, and, and just to a sack lunch service. The other four K-5 buildings will go to sack lunch service um, completely um, this, this coming week. The Bozeman District staffing issues are seriously impacting their special needs students. Schools are still searching to fill 15 special education paraprofessional positions. Continuing our coverage, a Montana Legislative Committee hearing to talk about the State Judicial Standards Commission quickly turned into the latest battle between Republican lawmakers and the state judiciary. Members of the GOP again took aim at Montana judges for alleged bias. Montana Supreme Court Chief Justice Mike McGrath, who was in attendance, fired back at the criticism, calling an independent judiciary the linchpin of our economy and society. But some Republicans took issue with comments he made in in the past calling their proposals to create a citizen panel that could remove judges the end of democracy. Do you think even that was appropriate for some of the comments that were being said and some of the condescending remarks toward the legislature that were not just offensive to the legislator legislature but also uh, just out of out of line? 
It just meant that if there was a mob that was mad about something uh, that a judge had decided, they could uh, remove that judge from uh, office, even though the judge is elected by the people. And yes, that is the first step in the uh, demise of a democratic system. The bill that proposed the Citizen Commission was killed during the 2021 session. A legislative committee will continue its study of the current system that allows complaints to be filed against judges. Over in Butte, the Lloyd Barr's trial continues today. Yesterday, the jury heard emotional testimony from a police officer who was in hot pursuit of Barr's moments after Broadwater County Sheriff's Deputy Mason Moore was gunned down. The officer said gunshots were flying in his direction as he followed the Barr's vehicle down I-90 at speeds over 100 miles per hour. A bullet even penetrated the patrol car of his fellow officer, Rich O'Brien. He testified that he didn't realize how close to death he'd come until after the chase ended. Uh, in the moment, I really didn't feel much of anything. I mean, it was more of your product of the chase and your adrenaline was going. Uh, afterwards, after I had a chance to talk with Richie, I told him to call his wife. Because <laughs> uh, I don't want to find out on Facebook. Lloyd Barris is on trial facing felony charges of deliberate homicide by accountability in the 2017 shooting death of Broadwater Deputy Mason Moore. He also faces two counts of attempted deliberate homicide for his alleged role in shooting at pursuing officers during the chase. And topping national headlines this morning, it looks like Gavin Newsom will remain governor of California. Exit polls and early voting numbers show voters rejecting his recall by nearly a two-to-one margin. CBS's Anthony Pura has more. California Governor Gavin Newsom appears to have beaten back an effort to recall him from office. The outcome of the race was projected in his favor less than an hour after the polls closed. I'm humbled and grateful to the millions and millions of Californians that exercise their fundamental right to vote. Early returns showed roughly two thirds of voters opposed the recall effort. A final count is expected to take days to complete because of the high number of mailed in ballots. No is not the only thing that was expressed tonight. Uh, I wanna focus on what we said yes to as a state. We said yes to science, we said yes to vaccines, we said yes to ending this pandemic. Had the recall succeeded, Newsom would probably have been replaced by Republican talk radio host Larry Elder, who has a commanding lead among the field of potential replacement candidates. When I become governor, if there are still state mandates for face masks and for vaccines, they're going to be repealed. Kevin Paffrath, one of the few Democrats in the race, said Elder's campaign promises backfired. Gavin Newsom branded anyone other than him as willing to undo vaccine mandates, undo mask mandates, and folks had the fear of God put in them that, oh my gosh, COVID's gonna kill us all. Uh, and, and so that was a gift to Gavin Newsom. After delivering his victory speech last night, Governor Newsom tweeted, quote, now let's get back to work. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles. Newsom could face Elder again in the not-too-distant future. The governor is up for re-election next year, and the primary, which puts candidates from all parties on one ballot, is just nine months away. The Department of Justice wants the courts to stop enforcement of the new Texas law banning abortions after six weeks. The DOJ injunction says the law prevents women from exercising their constitutional rights. The filing also says the United States has the responsibility to ensure Texas cannot isolate itself from judicial review of constitutional violations. The case is likely to end up in front of the Supreme Court. Last week, the Department of Justice also filed a lawsuit against the state of Texas to challenge the abortion law. South Korea says North Korea fired two ballistic missiles today. This comes just two days after North Korea claimed to have successfully tested a newly developed long-range missile. Japan's Coast Guard says today's missiles landed in the waters between Japan and the Korean Peninsula. U.S. Command said they are still evaluating information about the launch. Japan's Prime Minister weighed in saying the firings threaten the peace and safety of Japan and the region.
Household incomes took a big hit last year during the pandemic. The Census Bureau report shows median household income fell nearly 3% to just more than $67,000. That is the first decline since the Great Recession in 2011. The Census Bureau also found the number of people with full-time jobs fell by nearly 14 million last year. 54% of those job losses were among workers making less than $34,000 a year. The report found unemployment aid distributed during the pandemic help keep five and a half million people out of poverty. A day after Nicholas came ashore as a hurricane, the storm is now a tropical depression. It's tracking slowly northeast into Louisiana, where heavy rain has already arrived. Areas hit by Ida two weeks ago are bracing for another six to eight inches of potential rain. Nicholas lashed Texas with gusts of up to 95 miles per hour yesterday. Storm surge and rain swamped coastal communities like Galveston, which saw nearly 14 inches of rain. Across Texas and Louisiana, more than five million people are now under flash flood watches and 200,000 are without power. Thank you so much for starting your day with us here in Montana this morning.